Yeah, it's going to be similar as it was last week for Orlando, you know, to, to see where the week takes us. No worse off than it was going in, just as the game went, kind of got hit on it and, and felt some discomfort where it was um, not in its best interest to keep playing. So we'll, we'll see where that goes during the week. Um, same with T, you know, it's uh, we'll just take it day to day with him. There were some things he was trying to do Sunday morning. At the end of the day, it was just smart to, to limit that and see where he's at this week. So. Um, we'll see where he's at as the week goes. Both day-to-day? -day? I'd say both are day-to-day, -day. yeah. Zach, what can be done to get more pressure defensively? I mean, we had conversations with Lou about forcing more. And yeah, I mean, off, yeah, there, there's there's a lot of things we've tried. There's some things we've done in previous games. And, um, you know, that's always – that's it's, it's a challenge. You know, there's times when you pressure, and if you don't get home, you thin out the back end of the defense. And – um, you rush three or four and, and you don't get home and then, you know, they got to hold up on the back end. So um, something that we continue to evaluate constantly, you know, trying to find ways to disrupt the other team's offense and um, just keep working towards it. With uh, with you and setbacks you've had in practice, are there things you continue to pound as much in practice as how you monitor them? Yeah, we've done all that. You know, it's th those are things that we've always factored in and um, hydration, all the things that, that you can think of to help him, and, and he has done that as well. You know, I think, uh, so it, it's just unfortunate that it happened, especially in practice on Friday. Um, but again, he's, he's going through the rehab process and trying to do everything he can to get on the field and help us. How big of a difference did you see in just who you guys were or were not able to do offensively without T stuff that you just like were missing that extra element? You know, not, I mean, yeah, he's a premier player in this league. I felt like other guys were stepping up. And we felt, you know, first half we had three possessions. We felt like we got in scoring range on all of them. Um, and then the second half came out in the fourth possession and did it. And then got derailed on the fourth and one. And then two plays later, the, the ball got tipped and picked. So there wasn't a lot where we felt like, man, we're just not having any progress here offensively. Um, really, I thought the guys stepped up. I thought Mike Gusecki stepped up and made some really big time catches. And I thought the backs did a nice job and some of the check downs, getting some positive yardage. And so um, Jermaine made a great play on the go route, you know, and stepped up. And so there's there's more that he can continue to do as well to help us. Um, we always love to have T out there because he makes a lot of big plays for us. But I think we're starting to see other guys step up as well, and, and we've got a comfort level in them. Zach, what happened there on when I believe it was Jermaine that came out of the two push and Joe wanted to go? No yeah. So Joe, Joe could see that they were subbing. And so he wanted to get on the ball and trap him and, and with 12 guys on the field. I had already started calling the next play in the personnel. And so we were subbing based on what I was saying. And so it's just, it's too, you can't communicate, Joe can't communicate to me on what he's trying to do. And so he, it was just unfortunate he caught him subbing as we were subbing. He didn't see that we had already put someone on the field. And so the officials did the right thing and they have to. As soon as, as, soon as a single player on our sideline steps on the field, they have to hold it whether we sub or not. And so they made the right call. I thought overall those officials did a great job. They were they were some of the best communicators I've ever dealt with. And um, they made the right decision there. And I, I could see his frustration because he couldn't see Jermaine coming out there. It wasn't Jermaine's fault. It was we were calling the first it was really nobody's fault. It just was unfortunate that it caught that way. Do you expect Burton to see more playing time yesterday yep. the snap count was way up? Yeah, continue to find roles for him. Um, I thought he did a nice job on some of the things where um, he got the ball directed towards him and, and some that didn't even that were completions elsewhere and so continuing to find ways to progress him along what is did, a good thing what didn't happen on the third and one was it that you didn't feel like the offensive line got enough push was it that Moss not having a great read like why did that not work the third and one run we had mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot of things that could have been done better you know I think um, the whole thing together could have been better what, what's your do you have regret over the fourth and one yeah call you mentioned that yesterday and what did you yeah, I, I think on fourth and one for the primary read to be thrown behind the line of scrimmage, and that's where the ball should have gone with the play call, that's not the best answer we can give our guys. And so that's that's 100% on me. Um, Got to give us a better answer. I like the decision to go for it. I think at that point in the game we needed to go for it and be aggressive in the moment. There's got to be a better call there that I can get us to. And um, So, yeah, 100% on me. Andre has been done really well in the scramble drills, red zone, that type of thing. What's the next step for him to be more involved in, in the offensive? I think, I think sometimes just the way it plays out, the ball doesn't come that way. 
and he had the target yesterday on, on the curl route. He's got to come up with that. But I don't think there's anything where um, it's, it's on purpose where the ball is not going his direction. It's just the way that the play is playing out. And that's just part of it. You know, there's Gusecki had several weeks where there was limited targets. And then all of a sudden this game, there was, there was a multitude of targets for him. And he took advantage of it. And so I think that could be the same for Andre. All of a sudden for Andre, that same situation could pop up to where he gets eight to ten targets and has a lot of opportunities. And um, so again, he just continues to progress for us. The explosive for Eric Hall, is that play specifically for him? Or could that have been anybody in that situation? Uh, he's run it twice now. He caught the same thing against Kansas City. So he, um, those are the two times we've, we've run that play this season. So he's, he's been the guy in on that play both times. But um, I, I feel comfortable if other tight ends had done it. But he's just the one that's been in there when we've done it twice. I think we've got the right guys in there that understand we got to play better. we got to find a way to get off the field and get some stops. And um, I think we're committed to that. There's other guys that continue to find roles that we'll, we'll find different ways to utilize them to see if they can create sparks as well. Uh, but I think we've seen that the last two weeks against Cleveland and New York. They gave us winning performances and allowed us to win the game. And this week wasn't good enough by any, any group on our team. And so this week against the Raiders is a big challenge and an opportunity to, to show us what we've been seeing from them in these past weeks. How are you evaluating Julian Jones, Sheldon Rankins, Patrick Reed, Jay Hunter? Well, I think you just got to look at each unit. And our unit, we, we need more from those units. And so um, I'm not drilling down on, on any one player. I think as a unit, we got to continue to play better. Were you surprised at Julian not getting the production you would like across his consistency, given that a lot of you guys on second year were getting your high draft picks? Were you surprised they're not getting I think, you know, given where we're at in the season, three and five, we, we got to get more out of everybody on the team, coaches and players. Coach, you've been telling them what you're doing, developing specifically with the young guys on defense. Yeah. What, what, what kind of needs to happen for that young wave to, to show some more consistency? I, I, they're getting a lot more comfortable in the scheme and just how the game's going to come to them, the different styles of players and offenses they're going to face. And so I think every rep they're getting, um, they're going to continue to improve. and. Again, we're, right now we're counting on everybody that walks on the field to, to be a playmaker for us. And so, again, I just continue to see improvement from those young guys. We're playing a lot of them. You know, I, I don't know, 10, 11 rookies that are out there right now. And they're out there for a reason, not because we're just trying to develop rookies. We're out there because we feel like they've earned the opportunity. And, and um, you know, so I, I think that's, that's the right move, and they'll continue to play for us. Yeah. Is this the second year that you guys aren't getting the impactful tight end production you need from them? I, I think that's part of it is is missing four games this season. You know, getting hurt against the Colts and so missing the tail end of training camp, missing four weeks. And so um, that's a lot. That, I mean, that's six weeks of work there leading into the season. And so I continue to, to know that we'll continue to see more from Miles and um, he'll have some plays he's going to make for us that are going to come up in big moments. With the trade deadline coming up next week, is there – no, I mean, I, the team that we've got is the team we're going to continue to coach and believe in these guys and um, always let Duke in the front office deal with that stuff. Last couple of games, last couple of games uh, Q said that you know, you've been very, very close to breaking big runs. Yeah. You know, Blackbear, Blackbear, almost uh, huge, huge run. Do you feel that that was the case yesterday? It, there, there was a few, not enough. Um, and again, it's I can't sit up here and just continue to say there's there's one one guy off on each play. We got to get all eleven on the same page uh, to get more productivity there, and I got to call more. You know, give us more opportunity as well. So there, there's there's again, players and coaches were all involved in that thing and getting that thing into a better place than it is after this week. Going back to the trade deadline, what do you think are the pros and cons of, of new teams needing to make moves uh, across the board uh, for the other season? What, what are the pros and cons of making moves? Yeah, I mean, you'd you'd have to ask the teams that have done. That you know, I again, if something comes on my radar, I'll research it. But otherwise, I just focus on this. Communication in the secondary is, is strong. You've shown you out of the gate, obviously, with your Vaughn back. Do you feel like there was a step back there potentially yesterday? You know, there it wasn't always perfect yesterday. There was moments um, I can think of two or three where we got to do a better job, whether it's communication or just one man doing the job he's supposed to do. And, and would present, prevent some of those bigger plays that we had. Kind of to that point, that's something we were talking about is getting what you do in practice into the game. How do you kind of make that jump from getting what you're getting in practice consistently into games or in the game? 
we've seen that happen over our time here. Um, again, it's just, I think as a team, we come out of that game thinking this is a game we needed to play. All three phases need to be tied together. And in the second half, my message to them just now was it just it wasn't enough. In those key moments, um, they were at their best and we weren't. And so you just got to look collectively. You know, it's it's we always we always practice hard. We're on all the details. We're making all the corrections. So I'm not going to say that there's something we're going to reinvent there that's going to change everything. But um, we got a lot to play for right in front of us with with the Raiders. They're in a very similar position as we are, feeling the same way we are. So we got to pick ourselves up and find a way to go to get a win this Sunday. Yeah, I, I think the challenge is to the whole team. We haven't gotten the wins that we've anticipated getting, that we've been working towards. And um, internally, that can be frustrating, but but we can't allow ourselves to feel that. You know, you got to, this is the NFL, it's a very fair league. Um, we haven't played half our games yet. And so our focus right now is just, man, how do we have a tremendous week, get ourselves back on track? Because when you get that win, that feeling changes everything the next week. And so just excited to get our guys back on the field get a chance to put this one behind us, find a win this weekend, and get back on that winning track and start to build most of the momentum. With a quarterback and the targets that you have, what do you need from your weapons? Um, sorry, I didn't quite understand that at first. Kind of a curveball. It was a curveball the way you said that. I was starting to think of how many passes he had thrown to him. But you understand what I'm getting at. You yeah. have a great passing attack. What do you need from your weapons? So, in the, obviously, we want explosives that can really jumpstart a drive. Um, there's some times you're going to wear them out with a three and four yard run that's going to present something bigger. There's been times where a two or three yard run has opened up something in the pass game off of that same look. And so it's not always what presents the naked eye in terms of the effectiveness of it, because there's a lot of things that we use to play off of that that helps us in the pass game. We put a lot on Joe's plate in the pass game. Um, so sometimes just being able to hand the ball off for an effective gain gives him a little bit of a breather to, to set himself up and then go attack on whatever the next pass is that we have. So there's a lot of reasons to, to want to be successful in the run game, obviously. Um, there is a mentality that when you get that thing going, that feeds into the energy of the team and the sidelines and the offense. And um, so that's not foreign to us. We, we know that that's something that we got to pick up. Okay, thank you.